Hello, I'm Mary, and welcome to the Tartan Topiary. On this channel, I always feature a book on the topic of interior design or gardening, and often share ways that this book has inspired me or general musings of life. Come sit and relax while we look at Great Houses of New England, text by Roderick H. Blackburn, photography by Jeffrey Gross. Roderick Blackburn is an ethnologist, which is the study of characteristics from various ethnicities. He is also an architectural historian who graduated from Cornell University and has held positions as director of research at Historic Cherry Hill in Albany, New York, assistant director of the Albany Institute of History and Art, and senior research fellow at the New York State Museum. In the same tradition as Rizzoli's Historic Houses of the Hudson Valley and Great Houses of the South, Great Houses of New England feature a stunning array of beautifully photographed houses that range over four centuries. And it offers distinctive examples of the architecture of this region, including Maine, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont. With lavish photography of sumptuously appointed interiors, including many rooms that are rarely seen, along with wonderfully detailed house exteriors and magnificent gardens. The comprehensive text by architectural historian Roderick Blackburn detail these great houses of New England as a landmark work of enduring interest to homeowners, architects, historians, and all those who love fine architecture and interiors. Jeffrey Gross writes in the foreword, to find and photograph outstanding examples of architecture representative of this region had become a daunting task and at times seemed utterly impossible. It was never my intent to present the greatest houses. This was not to be a contest, but rather outstanding houses relating to this region, its climate, topography, and most importantly, the people of New England, be they pioneers from other shores or native-born. My many travels throughout the New England region for this book was indeed a privileged journey. The houses that follow have great things to share with all of us. Houses do speak, each and every one has something to say. One need only listen. Although this book was not meant to be an academic study of the architecture of New England, it does engage the intellect and delight the eye. The text is comprehensive, and the photographs detail the evolution of residential styles from our country's earliest days. Historic New England 
is a nonprofit organization, and they currently own and operate 37 house museums across five New England states. Great Houses of New England feature 19 homes, some of which are owned by this organization. The book offers historical content about the lives of the builders, homeowners, artisans, merchants, statesmen, and all of the men and women who so marked New England with their vision, determination, and craft. They were not only a cornerstone of our nation, but they still influence us today. Great Houses of New England, written by Roderick Blackburn. Photography by Jeffrey Gross. This book is 272 pages. It is published by Rizzoli, and it originally retailed for $55. I thought we would visit another historic home this week, and though it is not located in a New England state, there are many items featured throughout this house that are from New England. This is the George W. Dixon home, located in Newburn, North Carolina, built in the early 1830s. Dixon was a successful merchant and tailor. At the time he built the home, George and his wife Antoinette enjoyed an upper middle class lifestyle with their three children. This household was typical of a late 18th century urban dwelling in what was considered a large city at the time. When the home was restored in 1957, there was so much paint covering this very crown molding that it was barely visible. This beautiful wallpaper is period appropriate and a replica from a home located in New York that was dated to 1835. In the 1830s, Newburn declined economically, slipping from its position as the largest city in the state. 
At this time, Dixon lost his business due to fire. He mortgaged the house and its furniture four times between 1833 and 1836. He eventually lost the house due to foreclosure in 1839. With the invention of sewing machines, the need for tailors like George Dixon quickly decreased, and this was the primary reason he was unable to save the home. Some historians believe this mahogany sideboard could have been original to the home. It is a piece that was auctioned and originally made in Edenton, North Carolina by cabinet maker James Borowitz. During the federal occupation of Newburn in 1864, the Dixon House served as a hospital for the 9th Vermont Infantry, and this dining room was used for surgical care. This home is federal in style with some Greek revival features, and it is a good example of the popular side hall plan that many dwellings built in Newburn between the late 18th and early 19th centuries featured. Originally two and one half stories high, the house received a two story addition at its east elevation in the late 19th century. Most of the shelf clocks in the home are manufactured by Eli Terry. Eli Terry was an inventor and clockmaker from Connecticut. He received a United States patent in 1797 for a shelf clock mechanism, and he introduced mass production to the art of clockmaking, which made his clocks affordable to the average American citizen. This door, with its original faux wood grain painted finish, is from the late 1800s. He's probably set up for Hannah, the little daughter, because it's a little fancy. Uh, most likely, the boys would be, it, we're not sure. As to, you know, they may have some big bedrooms. Big bedrooms. They are big. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a door that goes into a rather, rather nice bathroom. Back there. Oh, yeah, yeah, but that was added by the uh, no. like a little piece that sticks out the back. Yeah, that's not, that's not in the house. Interesting. There's a little bathroom under there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and thanks for touring the George W. Dixon home with me. I hope you will join me next week as we look at the most beautiful rooms in the world, a book published by Architectural Digest. And I'll also begin the redecorating process of this small guest bedroom. These colors and pieces served as my inspiration.
I've begun the painting and have chosen the drapes. We'll see how it looks. <laughs>